Hi everyone, so I'm continuing my Explained Correctly series by talking about the INFP. This is the true INFP, this is not the fake INFP, this is the INFP. The mystic, which begins with introverted intuition, supported by extroverted feeling. So, I talk about the mystic. Why the mystic? Well, because this is the type which, more than any other type, is most oriented towards things of greater spiritual significance, things which are otherworldly, things which have very little to do with day-to-day -day practical realities, but rather a reaching towards the profound. That is the nature of the INFP. As I said, it leads with introverted intuition. Remember, as I've been covering in all the in all these um, with introverted types, my explain correctly series. If an introvert leads with a perception, in this case, introvert intu intuition, they should be a perceiving type, not a judging type. That is what the Myers Briggs type indicator got wrong. So the true INFP starts with introvert intuition, not as some may think, introverted feeling. So the idea of introverted intuition and extroverted feeling together creates this effect where this is a type which is oriented towards thinking of those most profound and meaningful outcomes, but also romanticizing those outcomes, getting people on board with those outcomes, making these outcomes feel like something to feel passionate about, something to feel is ultimately worthwhile and believe in with fervor. So first of all, we have introvert intuition as a dominant function. So this is the key point, right? These are highly reflective, imaginative types. INFP spend a lot of time in their heads thinking about what is essentially the most significant path forward. This is not a type that just explores for the sake of exploring. It's more about finding those outcomes, finding those uh, pathways of greater significance. And the idea is that they want to follow that path. They want to find a life which aligns to the certain outcomes of greater significance to them. And this will come to them almost like a flash, a flash of insight, a sense of, ah, this is the direction we need to be going. This is of greatest importance. This is what is ultimately meaningful to the point where everything else will seem quite trivial to the INFP. This is the pathway forward, nothing else. So there's a, you know, an idea of a faith in a future that is characteristic to this type. This an idea that th there is a certain idealism that comes forwards as well. And it's not necessarily the case they're going to be so targeted and this is the outcome. It could be for um, some INFPs, a general attraction towards things which suggest or hint at a deeper profundity or significance. It may be a, um, an admiration of music that strikes at certain deeper themes in humanity. It could be someone who likes um, to like, collect items which have a certain oldness to them or speak of something symbolic or deep to interpret that um, lies beneath the banal towards either the gothic or the um, somehow, well, uncanny in some kind of way. It's that kind of feel, it's that kind of vibe which the INFP types are reaching towards. And why, and why I say it's like a vibe, it's because it's very much blocked with extroverted feeling. So the, the INFP is often very good at looking ahead, seeing how things will be. And there's no alternative. It will be this way. They just know it's going to come out in this particular way. And what they utilize extroverted feeling for is to bring people on board with that long-term outcome, whatever it is, this, or to express a certain mood or a certain vibe in line with a certain symbolic um, themes or patterns of meaning that they want to convey. So extroverted feelings is how they then connect these patterns with other people, get other people interested and excited or motivated by it. And INF is a very gifted at working, especially on the one-to-one, -one, in bringing people into 
the fold in building a certain group, a certain exclusive belonging, a certain collecting together of people who are all on the same path and journey. The INFP is very able at um, talking to people in a way which isn't overtly manipulative, but rather is able to subtly get people to do what they want to do, essentially. They are very able to conduct themselves in a sort of diplomatic way. And in doing so, they are more likely to blend in rather than stand out. It's not about being the one who draws attention to themselves. It's not like the ENFJ is often a very dramatic and mood-setting individual. For INFPs, it's more about blending into any particular mood, any social uh, social environment, which makes them very easy to like and very likely to survive any sort of social um, situation. They're the ones who, in such as a, a purge or a Carl, if, uh, assuming they weren't the one leading the ideology, they'd be very good at socially surviving, at least being the one person who is not disliked enough by anyone to actually inherit some kind of position of power in the long run. So these types are very good at playing the, the long game. They're very good at thinking ahead in terms of where things are like to go, how conversations now or affect conversations in the future, and sort of positioning their their image to actually benefit from that in the long run. So that's some of the things I say about extroverted feeling very able to be chameleonic, to blend in, not to stand out too much compared to um, certain other beta types. Um, now we turn to the super ego block, and this is what is not valued by the INFP and is not an area of strength, it's an area of weakness. So this is, again, like the ENFJ, about day-to-day -day practicality. INFPs do not like this part of reality. Um, what they can do to a certain degree is introverted sensation. This is the this is the one type where you'll see far less extroverted sensation than introverted sensation. So this will actually be quite a a gentle and peaceful seeming type for a beta type. Um, they tend to be very good at keeping the peace, moving things over, being more diplomatic. You could say they can also maintain the day to day environment, keep things nice enough, um, but. The idea is that this is something which is kind of painful for an INFP to do for too long. They are types who don't actually want peace and harmony in the day to day. Instead, they are craving intensity. They just don't know how to create that themselves. So this is almost like a role they feel they have to put on to manage their day to day because they cannot take a more confrontational approach to the day to day. They need help in that area. Um, now, whereas they are better at sort of um, creating a positive aesthetic and smoothing things over in the day-to-day. -day. Where they really struggle is when introverted sensation is blocked with extroverted thinking. Now, this is when, this is their blind spot. This is where it's about um, practicality. It's about how things work. It's about how to improve what you're doing. It's how to be more efficient. Um, it's how to update what you know to be true based on new factual information. INFPs struggle with this. They, they, even the idea that they are a being that needs to be in continuous development is strange to an INFP. The INFP discovers who they are. They find their identity. They find that path of significance. And that is who they are and what they're about. They're not a type that's looking to change you know, their models of thinking and how they work and how to improve things and how to um, adapt to practical realities. INFPs are not types which tend to learn and practice new skills, for instance, or do things very efficiently or very effectively. They may struggle to, um, um, well, they may struggle with the expectation they should be um, improving how things work and taking in new information. Um, often they'll just try to get someone else to do boring practical things for them. And they're certainly not the sort of person to listen to a long lecture full of factual information. They'll, it'll, they won't really take it in. It's going to be more for them more about what is actually meaningful and significant and tuning out all the factual noise. So that's one of the um, the blind spots of an INFP, where they're most likely to struggle, that need to be practical in the day-to-day. -day. And certainly if you put them in a situation where they have to learn how to make something work and they have to think fast about it, they're probably not going to be very quick about doing that. They're far more likely to be a type that, again, will, will 
be far more comfortable getting someone else who's more practical to do everything for them or just to have servants around the house. That would be wonderful for an INFP. They almost want to live a sort of more aristocratic life, you could say, something a bit sort of separated from having to actually look at things and improve how it works and collect data and check that and revise that. That kind of, that, that sat will just be mentally exhausting for an INFP, a type which doesn't often have much energy to begin with. So now we've moved out of a super ego block, we can look at the super id block, which is valued, um, but still weak. So this is about um, the pursuit of power, the um, strength of one's convictions and one's ideology, the imposition of one's will upon one's environment, all areas which the INFP is not naturally very strong but which they actually have a great deal of valuing for. So first of all, we have the suggestive function, extroverted sensation. So the thing about INFPs is that they are so in their heads, they're so um, imagery and future-oriented, they really struggle with anything that's just in the day, uh, that's just about acting right here, right now. They're at their best in the far-off future, or imagining back into the past or even just exploring a completely a completely fictional world there's nothing about that which ties into right here right now the thing is they actually want to feel alive right here right now they feel almost trapped in their heads at times they want someone to almost grab them by the shoulder shake them create that urgency create the sort of do or die situation by which they can actually act until then, they'll feel trapped, they'll feel as paralyzed, not able to act, not having the options reduced enough to a simple do or die for them to actually feel like they can just spring into action. So they are deeply um, appreciative of those who can create that intensity, can be create greater urgency. INFPs are types which are naturally, I'd say, more submissive in their nature, not because they are conflict averse, but because they like to submit to strength. That's the thing. It's not that they're conflict averse. It's that they actually respect those who are tough. INFPs may complain that someone is being brutal. Someone is actually making them do things they don't want to do. And they may even be quite stubborn and disagreeable. Nevertheless, despite their stubbornness, they can also be very pliable when it comes to you just instead of arguing with them, just make them do it. Just making an INFP do something, they will, they will fold. They will give in to that. They will be moved. They will be pushed to do the thing they said they weren't going to do because you applied pressure. You applied force to them. There's almost a, a strange respect they can have for that. They can, on the one hand, befriend the underdog and advocate for the underdog and the brutal treatment under the dictator, but at the same time, be very comfortable being around people of great power and sometimes the ability to enact um, their willpower on others. It's a strange dichotomy you find, well, duality you can find there with an INFP. Um, examples can include looking at, say, Mahatma Gandhi, um, who, in a way, was successful because he bowed to the colonialists. He, he um, allowed them to do what they would onto him. And by being someone who gave in to them and submitted to refused to use violence, but allowed violence to be done to him, he was then able to wield a, a moral or ideological and spiritual strength, which enabled him to secure the independence of India. Or if you look, say, at Mother Teresa, she was someone who was very much about talking to various, you know, powerful people, sometimes even dictators, and was able, sort of attracted to that kind of power and influence. So it's a, it's a very curious thing you may find with INFPs. Um, now, also, if you look at, say, the work of Nietzsche and the sort of the looking up to the Ubermensch, this idea of a more powerful, almost godlike being, which man will eventually um, become or, or essentially give way to over time. Um, in contrast, the pliable INFP in the more sensory realm becomes very stubborn in their introverted thinking. These are types who grow over time to, to discover the intellectual truth. What is absolutely true, 100%, 
There is no doubting it. There is only faith in that being the underlying truth of this universe. So INFPs are very much people of faith, faith in the in the underlying truth, which um, goes beyond any day to day factual observations, any sort of trivial anomalies. The INFP is one which says, no, this is absolutely true. And even though outwardly, they may be very pliable in what you make them do, and they may be very diplomatic in their mood to the point where they, you may often assume actually agree with you. Under the surface, there is a very stubborn character, someone whose ideologies will not shift, who will not change their mind over, over matters critical to their identity and their ideological positions. INFPs often are very, um, it's often very, they're very uncompromising, but very clear in terms of what they actually believe in. You may meet the INFP online who is, for instance, the, the Marxist or the libertarian, and that the, the isms are something which they believe very strongly in. Um, but this idea is that they've sort of grown towards it over time. They're very interpersonal people and spiritually or inclined people who then acquire certain rigid principles. And that can guide them very strongly. Sometimes it might not guide them very well, um, especially if there's, they're advancing a certain ideology without any mind towards the practical realities, such as in its worst case, uh, Pol Pot in uh, the Khmer Rouge and the advancement of uh, his um, agrarian society and the millions who died as a result. Or you could say um, Robespierre um, in um, revolutionary France. Um, examples there of the of INFPs who pursued ideology um, to a dangerous extent without mind to what was actually happening practically. Um, but yeah, even with someone like Gandhi, where his belief against using penicillin actually led to the death of his wife. Practical realities are not important, but the ideology, that is what's important. The structure, the truth of that structure cannot be um, supplanted by what is simply shown to work in a particular moment. So that can be a difficult thing with some people doing with INFPs. They may seem like they did, they agree with you, actually you haven't changed their mind, and you may think you've changed their mind with facts, but they'll go back to saying what they were thinking just before. It can be very intellectually stubborn, um, INFPs. Now, finally we get to the id block. Now, the id block, this is about, um, well, what is strong but not valued. So what you'll find is that the INFP is a type which is about what is ultimately significant and meaningful. These are people of a faith. These are people who want to develop an intellectual understanding for which they can analyze the deeper themes of the universe, whatever that is. So the idea of simply exploring different individual perspectives is less interesting to them. These are people of world change and finding um, logical beliefs and philosophies to change the world with. These are not types who simply want to go and explore each individual and what they personally think. So any NFI is not much of an attractive thing to an INFP. Um, when it comes to ignoring function, it's the extrovert intuition. INFPs, as I said, can be very stubborn. Um, once they find that path of meaning and significance in their lives, they're just going to see anything outside of that as a distraction, as something which could lead them astray from what is actually ultimately important. INFPs are very deeply imaginative people, but at the same time, they actually can be quite narrow. Um, this is once they found that path, of course, they go through a period of breadth in which they end up exploring and trying to find different po points of view, different influences to eventually discover that meaningful path ahead. But once they found it, they then actually narrow down a lot because they found their meaningful path. Now there's no point looking outside of it. So they can be very set on what the outcome is and how and essentially be inclined to dismiss things which don't line up to that ultimate path ahead. So, yeah, that's what I say about the ignoring function. It's not that it's weak, it's just that it's not valued. It's it's deliberately suppressed by their introverted intuition. Um, and, yeah, 
Let me have the demonstrative function is introverted feeling. Now, this the INFP uses a lot more. Now, as I said, over time, they grow towards becoming more structural, more logical, you could say, in terms of how things fit together in a very academic way. You may know, more often you may see with perhaps some men, especially, uh, becoming more academic, more likely to like talking about a certain area or, or niche field which they've developed expertise in. Um, but to start off with, it's about one-to-one -one personal relationships. And INFPs are very talented at building intimacy uh, with each individual they think has some kind of long-term um, significance according to their to their vision. So what they're very good at doing is befriending certain people, people um, and w evaluating the, the value and worth of each individual, deciding how close they want to be to said people, and then utilizing both introverted feeling and extroverted feeling together to work with people on the one-to-one -to, -one to kind of position them towards what will lead to that long-term um, outcome, which they think is being most important. This is why INFPs are so uh, successful as the grey cardinals, the people behind the curtain, rather than the person up front for everyone to look at. They're very good at, at, at sort of working the different chess pieces, you could say, into the right kind of formation by working with people to get to where they want to go. So, yeah, although they aren't the active one leading the charge, behind the scenes, they can set up events very well, very effectively. And that's how the introverted feeling is used as a tool to support their NI and FE. Right. So that's why I'd say about the INFP, um, the, um, the dual type to the ESTP. Um, if you'd like to learn more about the INFP and all the other types, please consider taking my course. It goes in depth on each of these cognitive functions or information metabolism elements. It goes in depth into each type with video examples to get a full understanding of each type and how it then interacts with every other type through the intertype relationships. So there's lots of really um, valuable information to be gotten from this course and some parts in there which you won't find in any from any other um, source available online. So please consider taking the course. Just email worldsocionics at hotmail.com. Anyway, thank you for tuning in, everyone. All the best.